What's up, everybody? It is the Growth Marketing Recap Call. I'm Shane Rice, dressed as Winnie the Pooh. And you probably couldn't hear me, dressed as Winnie the Pooh. Um, and I'm kicking off the call with some metrics. Uh, we're closing on the end of the quarter, so these are close to the So, when my go music. Be Which is appropriate because it's spooky season. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and share my screen, and I'll go through the numbers here. So, um, all right, great. So um, we're same trend we've been seeing with users page views uh, going down slightly um, this week as we you know, continue to uh, try to catch up with last year and some of the events that were going on there. Um, looking at MQLs, um, I think you know um, you can see here October has ended up being. Uh, a very solid month for us, uh, closing the quarter strong here. Um, there is some difference in reporting. I, some of the segments changed when I looked at the MQL dashboard this morning. Um, and so I just added segments to get us close, closest to the numbers we've been reporting. And then that way we can see how October performed here. So um, you can see uh, when you look at the numbers, you know, uh, we're on pace for about 75% of our uh, MQL, large MQL target. Uh, over 90% for mid-market, 85 for SMB. So um, the week-over-week -week growth there, I think, is um, pretty significant as well going into the end of the quarter. So I'm um, really happy to see that. And then um, let's see. Um, I think at this point, um, I would normally hand it off to Luke. I'm not sure if Luke is on the call, though. So um, I will just kick us right over to uh, show and tell. So um, uh, Shane, uh, actually, I've got a, a little intrusive <laughs> bit of the agenda oh, today. No, uh, it's the I wasn't last, sure. That's okay. It's the, um, this is a new segment uh, that we will be doing every last Thursday of the month. Um, and I'm going to share my screen and tell you about how the Unfiltered blog has been doing. Um, so I put together this little recap. There's a spreadsheet linked in here. Um, but this is basically just a list of all the uh, blog posts that were published to Unfiltered during this quarter. This is them sorted by number of unique views. Um, and if you go back to the issue here, I just pulled out the top five, um, as well as called out uh, two posts that we pulled over from the Unfiltered blog to the main blog um, and what traffic they got there. And as part of this exercise, I've opened an issue to potentially feature a couple of posts that stood out when I was doing this review, posts that uh, could potentially do well on the main blog. Um, so uh, yeah, 30 posts in the whole quarter. I think that's huge. Um, because this is new, I realize now it would be helpful to have a comparison to previous quarters. Um, so I will get that uh, for you next time. But um, I think we've seen like a lot of uptick in uh, uh, contributions to the Unfiltered blog. and. It, what's interesting is there are some posts that uh, we do pull over because they do well on the main blog. And then sometimes posts uh, do really well on the unfiltered blog and it's appropriate for them to be there because it's like a personal story that we wouldn't necessarily talk about as a company, um, but they still get a lot of traffic there because it's uh, already found its right home. So I'm gonna stop sharing. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to take them. Otherwise, I uh, the 90 second overview if someone wants to contribute for the first time, how they would get started. Sure. Um, I will drop a link to the unfiltered handbook in the agenda, um, but uh, let me see if I could just grab it quickly now. Um, uh, basically, you open a blog post issue in the www.github.com rep repository. Um, there is a specific unfiltered blog template for that. Here, I've finally got the, um, the handbook up. So you can see the instructions are here, including some uh, just explanations for if you're not sure if unfiltered is the place for your blog post. Um, but here we have the process here. So you open an issue, there's instructions for the merge request. Uh, this is entirely done within kind of your own team or if you have peers at GitLab who you would like to review, we aren't involved in this at all, apart from reviewing them afterwards to see if we are gonna move them over to the main blog. Um, so this is all covered here, but if you have any questions on the process, you're welcome to ask them in the content channel on Slack as well. All right, I will hand over to Luke to take us into show and tell. I think Luke might not be on the call, so I'll just kick off show and tell uh, for us. So just a reminder, show and tell is a way for us to celebrate the awesome things that you've achieved either in the week or in this case in the quarter. 
Um, so you can still absolutely add things to the agenda as you're listening here. Um, sometimes, you know, this is a great way to be a little more self-promotional of something cool. It doesn't have to be huge. It can be small, um, but help us learn what you do every day and what you're proud of. Um, so with that, I will hand it off to Niall to show the first thing. Uh, yeah, I'll just share my screen. Um, I just wanted to show, obviously, last quarter, a lot of work was done between alignment and the SEO and the content team to, to focus on content clusters. So it was a kind of a governance process established with like different types of templates that they can use and obviously checks, SEO checks throughout the production and post-production. So this is just some of the data from the uh, the actual topics folder itself for the clusters or the current cluster strategies kind of living. And we can just see that um, from just September to October, we see like a 90% increase in the keywords up to 38 for those placements. But most importantly, uh, the top three has gone from one to eight, but they're all focused on what the keyword strategy and the content was kind of looking at for the topics folder to align it to uh, top of the funnel queries, long tail queries, and obviously C terms. So it just shows it might take a little bit of time to get traction, but once the traction starts, it starts to build up pretty quickly. So just um, just want to surface that kind of work that's going on between the content and the SEO. And hopefully that's something we can build on as the clusters get larger over time, we can start building out those keyword placements and ownership of those specific terms. So uh, if anyone has any questions on that or... If not, I'll just hand it over to Suri. Actually, it's Val. I, I'm pretending to be Surrey today. <laughs> um, so Surrey wrote an ebook called Why Investing in a Robust Version Control Solution Helps Software Development Teams Become Enterprise Ready. She identified a gap in the enterprise buyer's journey and created this awareness level asset for the manager persona. So that's Surrey. Shout out to her. Um, I'm chiming in simply because I tackled a very modest topic on the blog last week and this week, the future of software development, not to say that we don't stretch ourselves. So anyway, if you're interested, um, we looked at everything from how the developer role is changing to emerging technologies, to the role AI will play, and then tomorrow the last post in this series goes up, which is how developers can future-proof their careers. Um, What's unusual about this blog series for us is that I interviewed 14 people and many of them were not within GitLab. So I had the opportunity to kind of reach DevOps practitioners out in the wild. So that was kind of fun. And let's face it, it is always fun to talk about our AI overlords. So I got an opportunity to do that. Over to Bree. Thanks. Um... I was just gonna do a Q3 content roundup for the content marketing team. I've listed everything here, but I'll just run through it real quick. Um, 17 blogs were written, 17 blogs were edited, 13 web articles written and finally published, yay. Um, six case studies published, eight case studies written, three eBooks were either produced new or updated, three newsletters were written, Three topics pages were updated, several rounds of email copy provided for campaigns. And I just wanted to give a little shout out to the content team since we were down a member for a majority of the quarter and Val came in hot like the last couple of weeks really pumping in a couple of web articles and uh, a number of blogs to get, get herself going in the Dev DevSecOps topic. Um, that's all I have. I don't know who's next. I, I think it's Becky. Hi y'all. So I I just put all of these in here, but this is the entire team summary. So I will walk through it real quickly, but it's not just my stuff. Um, so this is a summary of the Q3 OKRs that we have. So for brand strategy OKRs, the tone of voice guidelines, we started this, we did not complete it um, because our goal was to have the tone of voice completely written out but we have um, gathered data from corporate marketing and we have the document set out and it's in a really good place to get it completed in Q4. Uh, brand guidelines improvements. So I link to Luke's Epic that Monica started a thread on for the improvements that they've made. So the goal was to do 10 improvements and there is a longer list than that. So that's been achieved. 
for the marketing website refresh, I actually was surprised when I went through this. I thought that there was some things that we didn't hit, but we have achieved almost everything on the list that we wanted to do. So for the phase one, which was um, for us to iterate quickly, we launched an enterprise page and the bi-weekly homepage hero swap. For the phase two, um, update the top pages. We updated, we touched every single one of the top 18 pages and there will be a longer video to come out for that. Um, but also in the top 100 pages, they were all touched in some way except for three. Um, the, thank, you, thank you, Tater, sorry. <laughs> um, phase three, uh, we, for CTAs, we updated CTAs for consistency. The navigation started, of course, why do they have to bark like in the middle of the meeting? Tater! <laughs> uh, navigation, the product bar menu um, work was started and we have navigation, we have a navigation bar A-B test going on. Uh, for core messaging, we tested uh, messaging. When I say messaging, I mean copywriting of existing messaging. Uh, and that was done for the enterprise page. So we have that test there. For phase four, for the design system upgrade, so we wanted to concept, document, and begin testing a design system that has been achieved. Uh, top 10 pages we wanted to identify for Q4 updates. So not only were they identified, but we actually have an MR in progress for updating one of those pages, um, which is beyond what the goal for Q3 was. Phase five, we wanted to select a CMS, done. We wanted to iterate on project management. There were 32 handbook MRs. Uh, for updating project management uh, across the team. And we wanted to identify headcount and resources and we added six additional vendors um, before the end of the quarter. And for the um, content OKRs, um, Erica can add a bit more information here, but for building out the topics library, we um, got two out of the three use cases for the branded blog work in progress. Um, I think that is stalled right now. Erica can give some more information on that, but a lot of that has to do with um, just prioritizing and realizing that the CMS should come first. And then the localization for selecting a vendor, that's been achieved and website first, first video content, a uh, new GitLab product video is launched and with everything that's been happening in the world with commit, um, all the events have gone digital and we had to pivot to having a large number of videos um, in order to have those digital events be successful. So shout out to everybody on that one. Um, I will now hand it off to Hanif. Hello everyone, I'll just share my screen, spare me a second. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'll be focusing mostly on um, reducing the amount of errors on the marketing um, website. So our site hall score in SEMrush has increased from 62% to 67%. Um, we did reach a high of 71% in September, but we had a few more errors coming through, so it brought it down to 67%. Um, Total errors at the start of the quarter was 669. We're now down to 191. And during that period, um, we fixed 1,526 errors. And we also encountered 1,048 new errors. Woo! <laughs> that's, that's it from me. <laughs> Okay, I think we're moving into the shout out section of our call. So anybody who has a shout out for someone who helped you out this week, or I guess in the quarter too, um, go ahead and jot those down and Brandon, you have the first one. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to Hanif for taking on that case study issue, uh, volunteering to do that quickly. And uh, it was a big help, even though it was a relatively small uh, thing. And I'm I'm glad he remembered and was still familiar with that stuff because I had already forgotten because of all the context switching we do but um, yeah it was great thank you and looks like next up is it is indeed I want to thank Stan who um, from engineering for retrieving all my files that an invalid security certificate deleted so everything I worked on for two days was deleted when I tried to put it up on server 
So um, he saved me from throwing my chair through my window and spent about an hour and a half with me doing that. So that was great. And thanks to Luke for hooking up that introduction because uh, it was desperately needed. And Becky, you are next. Hey, y'all. So uh, I have here uh, just thanks to Will and Kristen, Natasha, and Jen for both for tone of voice data and for case study and publication social campaign that we were testing out. Uh, Shane Rice for helping me figure out all the GitLab things. And also, just so you know, I usually message him and I'm like, I do not understand this. And he's like, Shh, it's okay. It's just <laughs> here's the things that you need to do. Um, uh, Michael for getting the web team going. It was, it's been so nice having somebody to um, get all that stuff going and, and talk through some of the problems. Erica has done an insane amount of work on the website updates, including copy and messaging, like so much work. I can't even, I can't even start on that. Uh, Luke for giving us all the resources for those web updates. Uh, I want to shout Crystal and Christine from the finance team because they helped us get all of the budget items in line and get to a place where we we're able to get all of these vendors onboarded and start moving. Uh, so thank you to them. Um, and I think that's it for me. And thank you everybody on this team and everybody else. Um, I would list you out all individually, but I guess that's not, that's not technically a shout out. That's just a thank you everybody. Um, on to Michael. Yeah, thanks, Becky. Um, I just wanted to shout out uh, Jess, Javi, and Steven for being open to a very uh, ambitious timeline and a project that just kind of like materialized out of the air, but seemed like a good idea in that we just set a really uh, aggressive target of two weeks to make some changes to the homepage. You know, we're approaching it as an MVC1 redesign, and um, that's about as like clear as it gets. So getting comfortable with working to ambiguity and hearing a bit of like, hey, this is what I would like to see. And then having the, you know, the courage and, and um, you know, professionality, I guess, to kind of just come back and say, well, that's crazy, but here's what is possible. And uh, that's just such a great attitude. So thanks for being open to that. Who do we have next here? Shane. It's me. Um, so yeah, I just want to uh, uh, shout out, and this is kind of a, a vague one, um, but everybody who has helped with the handbook error mash this week, uh, you know, we have already reduced the number of errors in the handbook by over 15%. Um, so a uh, special shout out to Hanif and Niall for making the videos to talk about how to fix those items and why they're important. Um, and uh, all the work that's going on there, I'm really excited to see us really uh, tackling uh, part of the, the website that is, uh, difficult for us to maintain. So um, thanks to everyone for, for um, the, the help on that this week. And then I think uh, the, the, the person after me is Erica. Yeah, I just think I want to echo what Becky was saying, give kind of a broad shout out to everyone on this call and on this team. I think this is our second quarter, Daniel is worth marketing, is that right? And I think it's just really impressive to see all the work and especially the collaboration that happened across all the teams and how quickly everybody came together to kind of figure that out and just do really impressive things this past quarter. So good job, everybody. And then Erica has the next one. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to Brock since we're doing the quarterly shout out. He's brand new and coming in, well, not brand new anymore, it feels like 100 years that I've had his lovely help, um, but uh, really came in hot. We had you know, two major products happening simultaneously within two days of deadline and over, well over a hundred videos, um, probably closer to, you know, 150 to work on. And um, it was great to have them uh, work with me and Commit and Coursera and all the other awesome things that we've been pulling together so far. So I'm looking forward to the next great quarter and great job, everybody else. Thanks for all of your help on videos. And I think that's it. That was the last shout out. Awesome. I'll stop the recording. <laughs>